I'm back. Back and better like I never left. What? We have a lot to discuss and I'm very excited to get into it. So stay tuned for Basketball Unfiltered. Um. Um. Okay. So, the top story of the day, you guys already know what I'm going to talk about. Kyle Korver, welcome to the Cleveland Cavaliers. It is very nice to have you. Allow me to introduce myself. Who knows what dastardly crime might perpetrate next? He's a very clever arch criminal who must be put away. So, Kyle Korver was traded from the Atlanta Hawks to the Cleveland Cavaliers. Now, I don't know all of the parameters of the trade. I don't know exactly what was included in the trade. All I know is that he's now on the Cavs. And that's what's important. I don't care about how he got there. I don't care what they lost to get him. I know the Cavs didn't give up much. And I know that the Hawks gave up a lot. So I guess that they're trying to rebuild, start fresh, get some fresh legs in there. I don't know all the details, but I do know that he is going to be playing in wine and gold very soon. And I'm excited. Now, a lot of people seem to be scared. There's a lot going on. A lot of people are nervous. And I think that any time that LeBron James gets a new player, it scares people because they know that LeBron James brings out the best in anyone that plays alongside him. Now, it's not that big of a deal. We didn't get Steph Curry. We didn't pick up a Kevin Durant. Kyle Korver is still great to me, but I'm not saying that he's this superstar that is now being added to the Cavs super team. Everyone just calm down and relax. It is not that big of a deal. We lost JR. He is injured with his thumb and he's going to be out, I think, until playoffs. So we need a shooter and they picked up Kyle Corker. And I think that this is, a, I think it's a great move. It is a great move. I know that people are going to add this to LeBron James' name and say that he needs stars in order to win. Really and truly, what superstar do you know that has won a ring by himself? I'll wait for you to tell me. None. None. So, just calm down and relax. I think it's a good chess move. I think that they, they thought this out. It is a well-thought-out move, and I like it. Kyle Corbett is a great spot-up shooter. He still got some some shooting in him, you don't lose something like that. I don't care how old you are. I believe he's like 35, but it's like riding a bike. When you have someone like Corver on your team, we have even more leverage. When you have somebody who's a spot-up shooter like that, that can create a lot of space, this is a good thing. It's a great thing. He's only been averaging about eight points a game. However, he had some injuries, I believe, last season. He's 35. He's getting older, so I, I, I'm not going to expect for him to be Clay Thompson out here shooting the lights out. But I do know that he is going to be used for the perfect moments. And I'm telling you, he's going to come in at a clutch time where it counts the most. It, it always happens that way. We always get players that are instrumental pieces that we need for specific moments. Box, back out to Allen, his three point of I'm not going to say that he's going to be having a lot of touches. His touches are going to go down. But he is going to be used as an instrumental piece. I know y'all are nervous. I know you're scared. Inhale. Exhale. Breathe. It's okay. Now, while I was on vacation, I couldn't help but watch this game. Because I knew that it was going to be a good one, but I didn't know it was going to be this good. Here's Brogdon, the inbounder. Lobs it onto the Kumbo, eight seconds. Backs his way up, five seconds. Onto the Kumbo, has got to take a shot. Two seconds, step back, jumper! Got, got it! it! Got it! Got it! Got it! Got it! the buzzer! <laughs> Bam! Woo! So yeah. That was a dagger to the heart. Now, I know that Carmelo was tight. And I know that the Knicks fans were even more tight. But if this makes you feel any better, the NBA says that the 
shot shouldn't have even counted. That it was a shot clock violation against Giannis. I hate when the NBA does this. They don't call the calls, but then they tell you that they should have called the calls after the game is over. We don't care anymore. The game is over. The Knicks got the L. Why are you now telling us that the shot should not have counted? Does it make us feel any better? Well, not me because I'm not a Knicks fan. But it doesn't take away the loss. It doesn't take away the fact that Giannis just hit a game-winning shot in your face. The win is still on the score sheet. So what's the point of telling us? It's like a waste of time. But they redeemed themselves because they came back and they were beasting. The way Jason Kidd talked about it, this nice little post play here by... Seven to shoot. Anthony pulls up. Truth! Down 18 in the game, 13 after three. The Knicks take down the Bucks 116 to 111 and end their sixth game losing streak. The Knicks came back and beat the Bucks, got that redemption, got that sting from that shot off of their shoulders because I know that that game hurt them. I know it did. Carmelo was super sick. On the last second of four. And as they say, the buck stops here. So, it's good that they got to redeem themselves. Carmelo had a better game. It wasn't that great. But I do give him his credit. I gave him a shout out and I thought that he had a pretty good game. It wasn't awesome, but it was better than what he usually does. He's not going to do it every game. I already know that the Knicks are going to mess it up some way, somehow. But I give them their credit. They came back. Melo ended up having 26 points, 6 rebounds, 10 assists. Shooting 40% from the field, which is not awful. It's not great, but it's definitely pretty average. He um did 8 of 20. So he had a pretty good game. And I believe that he was quite clutch in the final minutes of the game. So... Good job, Carmelo. I'm low-key proud of you. Now, I don't like to toot my own horn. I don't think that I know everything. There's a lot of things that I need to learn and things that I may not know. But when it comes to this topic, I'm always correct. The Warriors lose to the Grizzlies. Do you remember this? I said this. This season, I said this last season, and I believe I said it the season before, that the Warriors have a problem with defense and going up against strong defensive teams. It's it's not something that's new. And the Grizzlies just showed it up a little bit more. Slow it down, they go through Gasol. Campbell Parson sneaking inside. Ian Clark has checked in. David working with Sean. Weaving through the defense, three for Eases back jumper, good. Right. Got it. Down to five. Uh, they get one step. step too far. Martin's on him at one. Step from nearly mid court, and we're going to overtime. You're up by 14 in the fourth quarter against Cleveland, and here today, same kind of scenario on the Warriors in the third quarter. Fourth quarter in overtime in terms of shooting the basketball. Yeah. Now the Warriors 2 of 13. If they do not get their defense together and stop disappearing in the fourth quarter, they may not even make the finals. There you go. I said it. I don't care anymore. I don't care anymore. They may not even make the finals. It might be the Cavs versus the Spurs. <laughs> At this point, they panic. They do stupid things. They chuck up stupid shots. Really? This is the Warriors that we were all afraid of? This is the same team that we were all afraid of? If you ask me, I think that this whole Durant move was a little overrated and overhyped. The Warriors can't depend on Zaza to, to, to save them. They need some serious rim protection. And if they don't get it, they're going to run into even more problems. The problems that I said that we're going to run into in the past, they're going to keep running into it. Nothing's going to change. You can't keep doing the same thing over and over and over again and then expect a different result. If they do not get their defense up, 
get some rim protection, stop vanishing in the fourth quarter and panicking, they may not even make the finals. They may get knocked out second round. It could happen. It could happen. But thank you guys as always for watching. I thank you for your support. It is so well appreciated. Uh, a lot of people are reaching out to me and supporting me and it's very, very exciting. And I thank you guys as always. If you are not subscribed, subscribe. And if you do not have a YouTube account, make one and then subscribe. And as always, I will see you next week. Thank you for watching. And this has been Basketball Unfiltered.